of modern kickboxing. This Saturday, the long-awaited Glory Collision 3 arrives once again to be held at the Heldredome in Arnhem, one hour east of Amsterdam. Welcome to Glory's Collision 3 special. I'm your host, Todd Grisham. It's been two months shy of two years since Collision 2, where Rico Verhoeven narrowly escaped in his last title defense against Badr Hari in front of a sold-out crowd. Collision 3 will once again be the home to the King's defense of his title, where he'll face his bitter rival, the Goliath, Jamal Ben Sadiq, in the trilogy fight currently tied at one apiece. Preceding Collision 3, Glory 79 will take place featuring four fights in four weight classes headed by a welterweight main event. Sixth ranked Aline Nabiev taking on seventh ranked Troy Jones of the United States. Fourth ranked American Matt Baker takes on newcomer Sirkan Ozkoglian, who also happens to be the cousin of Gokan Saki, who will be making his return to glory at Collision 3. A featherweight rematch with potential title implications has third ranked Alexei Ulyanov facing seventh ranked former champion Sergei Adamchuk. That is followed by Glory Collision 3, and what a card we have for you. After a light heavyweight battle between Michael Dute and John King, the first of three heavyweight fights with the best the division has to offer. Benjamin Adegbui faces up and coming sixth ranked heavyweight Antonio Plazabot. Donaghy Abania faces fifth ranked Sergei Maslobajev, and number one ranked welterweight Hamicha, coming off a first round KO at Glory 78, faces Samuel Debilly of France. Then before our main event for the heavyweight title, Gokan Saki returns to the glory ring after a seven year absence when he faces James McSweeney. And finally, the heavyweight world title is on the line when Rico Verhoeven looks to defend for his 10th straight time as he faces Jamal Big Ben Sadiq in the third fight of their trilogy tied at one fight apiece. Glory Collision 3 is exclusively available on pay-per-view at gloryfights.com. You can purchase and stream the pay-per-view live from anywhere in the world. Glory 79, which precedes Glory Collision 3, will be available for free at GloryFights.com, as well as Glory's Facebook and YouTube channel. At Glory Collision 3, the heavyweight division will be heavily featured in three of the six fights, including, of course, for the World Heavyweight Championship. In addition to the reigning champ Rico Verhoeven, Three of the top six ranked fighters in the heavyweight division will be featured, including number one, Jamal Ben Sadiq, number two, Benjamin Adik Bowie, and number six, Antonio Plazabot. While Plazabot may be the least familiar of the group, his dominating performance at Glory 78 against then fourth ranked Tariq Kababez earned the respect that he belongs in the upper tier of Glory heavyweights. Antonio Plazabot! Still coming forward. Nice jab! A jab! One. Put the big fella down! Pazabot showing he can take a punch. A way overcome for Mosdy! Pazabot walked right through it! What is this guy made of? Oh, he landed a big right hand. He's got the gun low. That Plazabot wants a KO, doesn't want a decision. Fight this. Fight her. You know the rules, only clear in a fair fight. Obey my commands at all time, protect yourself at all time, okay? Okay, touch gloves. Take a step back. This should be a good one. Plazabot versus Kababes. Fight! This crowd ready to explode if the tank can score a knockdown. He obviously is from Morocco. And that country has a large contingent of fans here waiting for bottom. Right away, you see the tank come right forward. Not intimidated at all from Plaza Bot's power. You look at Kababes and you think, hey, he could be a light heavyweight. 
Yeah, I asked him actually that. And he doesn't need to. Look at him go. He says he feels more comfortable with all that heaviness on him. He thinks his speed gives him an advantage against the bigger foes. Oh, yeah, his speed definitely does help him. But uh, my concern is when he gets the bigger guys like Rico, you know? It's very hard, but look at these counters back and forth. I mean, Plazabot isn't that much smaller than Rico. The legs are, but he's six foot five. Good straight right hand that splits the guard from Tank. And once I saw this fight was booked, I was like, fight of the night, easily. It's definitely a contender for it. Big Mike yelling to go to the body. It's Tariq who's going downstairs. Yeah, Plaza Ball likes that jab cross to the body, then follow hook. For Plaza Ball, maybe a nice right uppercut could be the shot. Because you see Tank really with more of a high guard defense. Break. And he likes to bring his head down, so maybe a right knee or right uppercut from Plaza Bot could be a good shot. Exchanging heavy shots right here in the corner in front of us. Those things sound big and deep, don't they? Yeah, and Plaza Bot, I know he's keeping his back here, but he's almost doing the right thing of looking to counterpunch because you know Kababes wants to go to the body, so he counters to the hook to the head. Yep, see those counter hooks? Because you know Kababes goes to the body, so he counters up top. Good uppercut there for Plazaba, whose face is very red already. Tank is a piece of iron, man. He eats shots and doesn't move. Oh, Kababas may have injured himself. Stumbled backwards. Fight! Let's see how his foundation is. Yeah, he didn't go back feeling comfortable. We know Kababas has good conditioning, but he's really leaving everything out in this round. Break. He step didn't back, want to back. say it, Joe, but I asked him, are you the best conditioned heavyweight on the roster? And he looked at his coach, and his coach said, yes. Yeah. Oh, they slug it out to oh, the end yeah. of the bell. He fell back again. No idea which way this fight's going to go. Fight. No, it was, uh, I like that forward pressure, though. And I mean, I think judges always like pressure, but Plazabot is doing good work fighting backwards and countering, so. All 10 giving round one to Tank. Thought maybe one or two judges would see it for the Croatian. Well, Kababes has forward pressure and the crowd more behind him, so everything he throws kind of, the crowd helps him out. Ooh, that left hand, buckle tank, the knee helped as well. That counter punch, he's down! Oh, yeah. And Pazabat puts tank right. down for the first time tonight. One, two, three, four, Kido, five, six, Seven, Honda, Honda, eight. All right, let's see how much he's got left. Plaza Bot going for the finish. It's the Plaza Bot counter hooks that Kababes needs to be careful of. And he just ate a knee there, too. Look at Oi. Plaza Bot, he's got to be careful. I think he's going to might get the finish very soon. I think the shot for Plaza Bot is still a right uppercut. Again, big shots from Plaza Bot. This is Oy. the best performance of his glory career. If he can seal the deal here against Plaza Bot, or against rather Kababes. Kababes is still whipping overhands, which is the last thing he should do. He's got to try to counter back a little bit cleaner. He's not even there. He's trying to clinch a little bit. But Plaza Bot just mowing the tank down. The okay. crowd trying to urge Tank on. I want to see Plaza Bot put the combinations together. I think that's going to be the finish for him. Plaza Bot can't punch himself out either. Oh, nice left hook. Oh! oh that might do it! Plaza Bot with a massive two, right hand! Three, yeah, that's four, done. Five, six, seven, eight. No. Nine. Ten. And that is it. What a performance. What a knockout for Antonio Plazabon. And after that first.
first round, Tank was so aggressive. Pushed Plazabot back, but ultimately Plazabot was able to find those counter hooks. And that power, once Plazabot gets open, man, that was crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened. Our referee, Yusuf Akni, steps in and weighs off this contest. We have an official time of two minutes and 14 seconds of the second round. Ruled a knockout for your winner, Antonio Plazaba. Antonio, you took down a tank. What an amazing performance, man. Take us through the fight, because you lost the first round, but came back amazingly. First off, I want to say Tarek is one of the hardest guys I've fought. You can see that he's a true Moroccan, like everybody. He fights very really hard. Respect to all Moroccans. But next, I want to thank the guys from Croatia who came here. They know who they are. Thank you very much for the support. Thank Lori. I just have one question. Am I now the number one rising heavyweight when I knock out the first one? Or do I need to beat somebody else? <laughs> <laughs> well, that answer is definitely not for me to, uh, to answer, man. Uh, but what did Mike tell you? Because Mike, in the first Mike round... Mike just told me, take it easy, because... But you didn't. In the second round, no, you it threw was so easy. much punches. It was, it was easy. <laughs> Not easy, but it was planned. We didn't go for a knockout, we go on the po uh, win on points. Then if knockout happens, it happens. I had the luck this time. What else to say? Thank, first of all, thank Mike, Miro and Walter for being in my corner, always supporting me. I know there's the team that can beat anybody. And awesome. I'm really happy, thank everybody. Give it up everybody for your winner of the night, Antonio Plaziba. Second-ranked Benjamin Attic Bowie has one of the most successful glory records you may not know about. With a career record of 35-6 and 15-4 and and in glory, Mr. Gentleman quietly goes about his business. Coming off his most impressive victory of his career, a third-round knockout against Badr Hari at Glory 76, this three-time glory heavyweight tournament champion is still someone to be reckoned with. When you're a professional fighter, you have to uh, just still have two weeks. We are working on, on Plazibat now. I think uh, the 23, I will be ready for him. I'm expecting a tough fight. He's a tough competitor. I saw his fights. He's coming forward. He likes to fight. But, uh, you know, I think I'm a different level than him. So uh, I need to shoot him there. Back tonight, fighting out of Romania. Here is Mr. Gentleman, Benjamin Abdek Bui. Definitely expect a win. I need to uh, go up uh, uh, and uh, become uh, the number one contender and then maybe the champion. I was collision too with Rico Bader and it was amazing. I had a good month. It was a different feeling and after a few months I fought Bader Hari on No Stadium. And now I'm, uh, I'm able to fight in that arena and uh, I can't wait to see the people, to see the crowd. I told you I'm a tough motherfucker. <laughs> Up next, nine-time defending heavyweight champion, Rico Verhoeven. Got hit, 
it's 1-1. One, one. I want to fight Rico again. The boss right now. You know, I'm the king. I'm the king of the jungle. And if he wants it, try and come and get it, baby. I'm the Goliath, man. I know I can do this. This past summer, Glory signed K-1 and UFC legend Alistair Overeem. Originally set to face off against Rico Verhoeven at Collision 3, he injured his back in training and had to bow out. Anxious to get back in the gym and make his debut early next year for Glory, Alistair Overeem waits patiently on the sideline. How's he feeling? Well, here he is. We recently sat down with the Reem. I got injured um, badly and... Yeah, it was uh, painful, I can tell you. Painful. It got diagnosed a little bit wrong. It was a disc in my back. So yeah, it was it was, uh, it was a difficult, difficult uh, time. Because you know, the fight is coming closer and closer. And uh, yeah, you need good weeks to get there. But then, you know, you're in week two of your injury, week number three of your injury, and it's still not really recovering well. I flew to the Netherlands to do my recovery here. Uh, this type of uh, disc injury is treated better in the Netherlands. They have better specialists here. Uh, very happy to say that I'm uh, one to two weeks out of uh, full recovery. And then I can train and start training again. Because the training has just been, uh, since the injury, very bad. And actually, the last couple of weeks, no training. I think it's an exciting fight between Rico and Jamal. They are one-on-one. -on -one. And I think it's going to be a hard fight. I think both are very motivated to, to show what they can do. Um, I give a little bit the benefit of the doubt to uh, Rico. 55 Rico, 45 Jamal. Um, but you know, Jamal uh, is a dangerous opponent. Very heavy, very big, punches hard, dangerous, young, still, you know, fresh. Uh, so 55, 45 uh, Rico, Jamal. With the addition of Alistair Overeem and Gokhan Saki to go alongside Badr Hari, the heavyweight division literally has become the division of legends. But one man still stands alone on his throne, the king of kickboxing, currently on a seven-year run few have ever seen in combat sports history. like I like to set the bar as high as possible for the next generation and that's what motivates me. My name is Rico Verhoeven, my team is Team Super Pro and I'm fighting for Holland. Yesterday where I started was tough. I don't want to go back to that time. Fight! Run one! So he was a, a rushing in fighter. He was on the ground like half of the time, so it was perfect. <laughs> Stop! Expect some fireworks early Fight. and often. I won every every round. Oh, big heavyweights, big low kick. Oh, I'm fighting as the underdog, but I'm leaving as number one. I focus only on the, on Saki. Like this, I'm U.S. Network, so get ready, fans. Look, you look at the results of the crowd starts chanting, Saki is there holding on the attack. Rico After that, we had Gita, but I was training with Gita for, for years back then. So I knew him inside out, and I knew I was I, I could break him. And now, Glory Heavyweight Tournament World Champion Rico Verhoeven. I won uh, that tournament, so I made money for the first. I made good money for the first time. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, Rico. How much? How much is it? Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. What are you gonna spend it on? I went and I bought a big
big TV, big ass TV, a PlayStation, and uh, an iMac a computer. It's time for glory! Yeah, of course, this is a special fight for me. You know, Peter has been my inspiration. Uh, yeah, since I was a little kid. So, yeah, having the honor to fight his retirement fight, like his toughest, being his toughest opponent at this moment. Yeah, it's amazing. Still give me goosebumps because I saw every fight of Peter Arts. The Glory World Heavyweight Go. title is on the line. Leaving it all oh. in the ring. Oh. 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 Rico Vahu. Hey champ, I started fighting at 12, but why do you do it? I want to be a kickboxing world champion. Already testing him with a right hand, and now he gets caught. Zimmerman gets caught by Verhoeven. Zimmerman is in big trouble. Spinning back. Verhoeven catches Zimmerman, and Zimmerman appears to be hurt. Anticlimactic finish, but what a sign of sportsmanship by Verhoeven. We go reign supreme, one or the other. I think it's more difficult to be the champion and stay the champion. Fight! The bell and round one. It's beautiful. It's brutal. It's the glory heavyweight championship. Wow. And still! After five years coming back, into Holland, being the champion, defending my title, like in my home country, that was Fight. that was an amazing feeling. That was a special moment for kickboxing coming back. Fight. It's time for some heavyweight fireworks. From the oh. Now he's eating punches from the champion. That was fun. It was a good fight, and you know, Breast of Arch is uh, definitely a, a good competitor. But Rico Verhoeven, right, he represents the new era of kickboxing. He's trained on the inside low kick, and it works. He's got successes. He's mixing the level with his kicks. He's going low, he's going low, and then he mixes in the high kicks. Products has no idea where the and kicks again, are coming. And again, the fight is over. Rico versus Bonner. It's time for glory. I'm there. I'm the champ. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling ready for this fight. I was relaxed, I was focused, shown that I'm just maturing up every fight. This crowd has tried to swarm the ring here. If we can establish order, that would be great. Fight! Here we go. And that uppercut landed. And blood is now pushing his punch. Oh, the head kick from Rico. Whoa. The referee is giving him a count. Did he break his arm? This is not our way I wanted to win. And I told him and I gave him all my respect. And you know, I said, we're gonna do it again, man. What I hope that my legacy is gonna be is that they're gonna say like Rico brought kickboxing to another level. Because that's, on my opinion, what I think I did. Another right hand from Lazar. Oh, and an uppercut from Rico. Rico! Seems like just a matter of time now. Right hand, left hand, and that's that's it. He spit me in the face, so I think that's uh, that's a good way to start. And yeah, he's such a for me, he's such a disrespectful person that make that made it like personal. But I did I did what I had to do. I just put him in his place, and then for me. And the rules you find too. Protect yourself at all times, play my commands at all times. I'm on Yeah, it was, was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. And we were we made history.
Rico. Switches stances. I'm ready. I'm always ready for five rounds, ten rounds, doesn't matter. Nice rear and now kicking that sits Kababes down. Another couple of those and Kababes won't get back up. There's another one. Hard to land those low kicks because you guys are waving it off. Some sort of injury to Tariq Kababes. We just added on to the legacy. I just want to set the boundary and the border so high for the next generation. And I want the next generation to say, I'm going to do it like Rico, but even better. The ideal situation would be is that I will be 10 years champion. For 10 years, be the very best that I can do. Yeah, hopefully retire as champion. When we come back, a close look at another giant, but this one calls himself Goliath. I want to fight Rico again. The boss right now. You know, I'm the king. I'm the king of the jungle. And if he wants it, try and come and get it, baby. I'm the Goliath, man. I know I can do this. Welcome back to the Glory Collision 3 special. I'm Todd Grisham. It's been nearly three years, believe it or not, since we last saw Jamal Ben Sadiq in the Glory Ring. Soon after winning the eight-man heavyweight tournament in December of 2018, injury, illness, and personal issues delayed his return until now. It was a terrible, terrible, terrible year for me. Injured after my fight, 2018. Last January, I had a fight against Rico. I fell out with an injury, a back injury. And after that, yes, revalidation, three months. And after that, yes, taking everything back up and, and start training again. And now I'm, uh, I'm here. I love this sport. This sport gives me energy, positive, positive vibes. So it was really difficult for me to to go through this uh, situation. But uh, I've been there. I'm happy uh, that uh, I came out of it and uh, that I now have my eyes on the 23 of October. I'm a fighter and sometimes things seem very difficult. This is life, you know, you, you go down and you stand up again. And sometimes it takes a little bit more, more time. But after that, I'm happy that I'm, uh, I made it. This is a new fight. I have a new team. I learned so much new things. And uh, I'm looking forward to fight them again. Because when I enter the ring, it's always a fight of the night. And I want to entertain the audience, like I always do. And I'm looking forward to it. I will fight anybody, anywhere, any place. It doesn't matter to me. I think, like people know, I, I, I've been waiting for this fight for three years now. and. Everybody wants to fight the champion. There, I think there is no other, there is no any fighter who don't want to fight the champion. But the fight is a fight, it, it can go any 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 way. So. Oh, and there's a right hand, and in fact, Rico, and a jab. Rico's in trouble. He is in trouble. He shakes his head no. This crowd says yes. Oh, I will be there this time. I, I have the experience of the last fight. And when the fight is there, I will be there. I think that there were a lot of, a lot of moments like this. But sometimes I made, I made look things very easy. And uh, I made also mistakes during the fight. But we learn every day 
and I have now a new team. I learned a lot of things and I trust the process. So it's up to the train to tell me what to do this time. champion, Jamal Ben Sadi. Well, I think I'm capable of, uh, of, of, of good techniques, good energy to, to become world champion and, 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 and I put the work in it. I put my everything, everything in it. And it's not what you, what, you, what you do, but what you keep on the side to do the work. And I think not many people want to do that. Because like I was a small boy, I was keeping keep on dreaming about to become world heavyweight champion of kickboxing. So it will be it will be everything for me. I work every day for my dream, every day. I think there is no day left that I don't was thinking about my about this world championship, so it will mean everything to me. Haymakers, there's a straight right by Ben Sadiq that hurts Zimmerman, and Zimmerman is down. Oh, and that's just right. oh, and he now begins to blaster wow. Zimmerman in the corner. Zimmerman helped the breeze here ringside from that big shot from Sadiq. Ben Sadiq being true to his words, and that's another knockdown from Ben Sadiq. Push it to the limit, I can't go no more. I'm ready for the 23 of October. Uh, I hope he's ready because I am. And it will be a great night. There is no love loss between these two giants with not only the deciding fight in the trilogy at stake, the Goliath has no intention of letting his second chance get away. But in order to do that, he must dethrone Verhoeven, who has no intention of giving up his title anytime soon. For me, this, is, this, isn't, this isn't even a challenge. People saw this fight. How boring was this fight? I almost fell asleep. It was uh, tw tw 29 actions in a full... <laughs> 20, 29 actions? Fuck him, you know. I beat them once. I beat them once. It's nothing. You couldn't even knock him. Get him in the corner. He was in the corner standing all night. So where were you? What were you doing? Were you scared of him? <laughs> oh, my God. Let's make it happen, man. I'm ready for this guy. I'm ready for any guy. But if he wants it, let's do it. We got this. It was an exciting fight for the people to watch. So for the rest, yeah, he hit me in the first round. And I think that's like yeah, the only serious punch he landed. Then he would, I hear like discussions like, yeah, in the third round, Rico got hit. Well, I was making a low kick and he like punched me in the forehead. <laughs> I, I, because I was on one leg, I got out of balance. I turned around, stand up, boom, let's go. So yeah, maybe that was an eight count. Come on guys, got it. You know, the, the best thing for me is that people are so talking about Ooh, Rico got hit. I put him down twice. And they already make it sound like they have the victory because they put me down or they were close to putting me down. And it's just like, for me, it's a very big compliment. If they feel that already as close as a victory just by putting me down, as long as they put me down and I get back up once more than they do, I'm still the winner. In de 24e minuut, de allerlaatste minuut van de vijfde ronde, dan pas ga ik hem nog uit. People got to have a need to watch the fight. I think that's a, that's a very important thing. So, this upcoming fight has a story. 
Um, yeah, the the fight with Bader has a story. So we 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 got we got some fights that that has story, and there's a, there's enough competition, you know. But it's just like the the biggest difference is they they can't outwork me. I work harder than all these guys. For me, my mindset is every day I'm with my back against the wall because I knew hard times as well. I've been I knew hard times that I had like just a small amount of money to to buy gas, to buy diapers for my for my kids and to take care of my family. But in my mind that was yesterday and I never want to go back to that time. So you can only go one way. That's straightforward. And even though I'm successful today, in my mind, I wasn't successful yesterday. And that keeps me motivated and driven to go 100% each day. And yeah, just make sure I, I work everybody and be in great shape and keep winning fights. Everybody's very good in the gym, but in the ring, it's like a whole different level because it comes like a lot of more tension and stress and pressure. And if I can be uh, as good as I'm here in the gym, in the ring, well, they're gonna, they're gonna have another problem. <laughs> they're gonna have Rico at a whole different level. Like, I think in the ring, I'm like at 80, 80% of what I'm normally capable of in the, in the, in the training. Last fight, <laughs> I think I was at 65, 65, 70%. Last fight wasn't, uh, wasn't my best, but like I said, it is what it is. I had a lot going on. I had a lot going on, which distracted me of my main goal. And yeah, that's like, for me, it was a very important lesson to learn that the, the mental part that comes with what we do is so much more important than the physical part. And the physical part helped me because, because I was physically in such good shape, I was able to resist all the blows I got and the downs and whatever. Because I was physically strong, we could better. But because I was mentally out of balance, I wasn't like there where I normally am, at where I fight like mentally. So I think that, that was the, that's what the big, biggest difference was for me. And that like, was the lesson for me, like mentally you should be such in, in balance. And if you're out of balance, it's, it's, the ring is not a, a nice place to be. There are so much more factors that make you successful because talent, you, you, you're born with talent. And that's just like one thing, because uh, when somebody that's talented and just does what he does and whatever, he can be pretty good. But people that work hard can pass people that are very talented. And, but when talent starts working hard, it like excels, goes to another level. So, and I, don't see myself as the most talented out there, but I am the hardest worker, without a doubt. the world look like uh, Rico still champion um, hopefully another uh, good fight coming up versus whoever and yeah like a, I think what I what I hope most is that 
this whole sport keeps evolving and keeps uh, going to the next level. Sometimes we're so strongly holding to the past, like, oh, that was so much better. Or back then we had this and that, that was so much better than what we have right now. But we are living today. So just embrace everything you have, embrace um, that you're healthy, embrace the lessons that, that life teaches us, and just, just keep moving forward, stay happy. From one end of the spectrum to the other, well, it's been seven and a half years since Rico last tasted defeat. It's going on six and a half years since Gokan Saki has stepped into the glory ring. And he has every intention of reaching glory one more time. Here is Gokan Saki. My name is Gokan Saki. I'm fighting for Mike's Gym Amsterdam. And I'm from Turkey. Left hook, left high kick, you don't have chance. No chance, zero chance. Story is like one week ago, uh, Mike uh, called me. I was in uh, Dubai on holidays, and uh, he asked me if I want to fight. Because we were training now for a couple of weeks already, but <laughs> a little bit in a secrecy. And uh, I said, yeah, sure, why not? Normally you train 10 weeks for a training camp. I did not have that time, but I was training already without pressure. And I was training hard. I'm not 100% prepared, but for fighting, we are ready every day, every moment. Saki's getting ready. You know, uh, is he 100% ready? I don't think so, but he's ready enough to fight. Yeah, Mike is also the trainer in kickboxing for me, who can make me believe, come back and make good fights again. As you saw today, he's uh, very sharp, very eager, and he really wants to fight. And I think that's what the people came for. You know, uh, how do you know if you're 100% ready? Why I'm gonna win? Because I'm the better fighter. I'm the better fighter, he's a good fighter. So I know he's training hard, but in kickboxing quality, I'm much better than him. And, uh, if we don't force, if we wait with patience, we do what we need to do, I will get him. I will catch him 100%. Can the Rebel return to pass glory? We'll find out in his return at Glory Collision. So before Rico and Jamal take the ring again in their bitter rivalry, we'll look back one more time at the King and the Goliath at Glory Redemption when we return. Got 
It's 1-1. One, one. I want to fight Rico again. The boss right now. You know, I'm the king. I'm the king of the jungle. And if he wants it, try and come and get it, baby. I'm the Goliath, man. I know I can do this. Welcome back to Glory's Collision 3 Special. I'm Todd Grisham. In December of 2017 at Glory Redemption, Rico Verhoeven and Jamal Ben Sadiq finally fought in their long-awaited battle for the heavyweight title. And they did not disappoint as we look back on this instant classic. Uh, my first professional fight was against Rico Verhoeven in 2011. I beat him on knockout. It's a long time ago, man. I was an upcoming talent. You gotta take a loss to become a boss. And I'm the boss right now. You know, I'm the king. I'm the king of the jungle. And if he wants it, try and come and get it, baby. He's a strong, good athlete. But I'm a fighter. And I come to fight. And I come to knock people out. It happens, ladies and gentlemen. December 10th in Rotterdam. Rico Verhoeven and Jamal Big Ben Sadiq. And now, Glory Heavyweight Champion of the World, Rico Verhoeven! Rico Verhoeven finally has gold around his waist. He is the new Glory Heavyweight Champion. So you've seen nothing from Jamal Ben Sadiq that would worry you at all if you were nothing. to fight him? Nothing. Jamal Ben Sadiq! You know what I want, yes? I, uh, I have said it yesterday. I want Rico, man. I waited too long for this. I beat him once, yes. so where is Rico? Come into the ring, man. Come. For me, this is this isn't this isn't even a challenge. People saw this fight. How boring was this fight? I almost fell asleep. Fuck him, you know. I beat him once. I beat him once. It's nothing. He tell me butter did this, butter did that. I am not butter man. I am knock you once. I was I was a little boy. Let's make it happen, man. I'm ready for this guy. I'm ready for any guy. But if he wants it, let's do it. We got this. Good afternoon, Rotterdam. How are you guys doing? I'm gonna scare the shit out of this guy. Same thing. I'm now fighting for the belt. Please welcome to the stage the challenger for Glory's World Heavyweight Championship, the Goliath, Jamal Big Ben Sadiq. It will uh, happen again. I will knock him out. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the best pound for pound fighter in the world today, Rico Verhoeven. Five keer three minuten is in hell. Ik ga hem uitwringen en ik ga ook al weet ik dat hij in de derde ronde of de vierde ronde eruit kan. In de 24e minuut, de allerlaatste minuut van die vijfde ronde, dan pas ga ik hem nog uitslaan. All right, let's have our big stare down court. Good luck keeping these guys apart. Here we go. If you feel the pressure and you knows uh, that uh, I'm not a fighter, that uh, he had the last couple of fights, I mean, I know it and uh, he have pressure and I can see it in his eyes. And you saw him breaking under the pressure. There is no other reason why you start shouting, spitting and doing some crazy shit, getting angry for nothing. One thing is for sure that 9 December is going to be 2 0. Definitely going to enjoy more with the suffering I'm going to give him between the fourth and the fifth round because it's going to be tough. But it's not going to last for five rounds. So let him think about five rounds. <laughs> it happens December 9th, ladies and gentlemen. Jamal Ben Sadiq versus Rico Verhoeven for the Glory World Heavyweight Championship. We'll see you in Rotterdam. 
I expect the rematch like we saw last time. Those two fighters made for each other. As for our main event, there is the king of kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven. He looks for his 15th straight glory win tonight. As for his opponent, it's the challenger, the Goliath, Jamal Ben Sadiq. Yeah, and he's going to really look on landing that big power shot he did six years ago. He's confident. His team's confident. Let's see what package Ben Sadiq brings. A lot of bad blood between these two. There he is, a mountain of a man. Six foot eight, 264 pounds, Jamal Ben Sadiq. And as intimidating as he looks on the outside, inside he's just as fragile as the rest of us a cancer survivor jamal was once near death's door he beat that disease and tonight vows to beat verhoeven and dedicate his performance to those battling cancer around the world
Some complain that Rico's not a closer. He's not a finisher. He's not a knockout artist. Is he going to prove everybody wrong here? The head kick started this sequence. An overhand right and another one. Oh, Sadiq's against the ropes. It's a standing eight. Three, four, five, six, seven. The mandatory eight count. What's up? What's Rico up? promised to knock out. champion of the world. Yeah, and once he found that right hand, he just kept following and following it. And it was that cumulative damage from all those punches that put Ben Sadiq to the mat. What a closing sequence for Rico Verhoeven. He took Jamal in the deep water, and he drowned him. And it was redemption. That's, I had something to settle with this guy. And I settled it. Well, the table's been set, and Collision 3 is looking to be another in a long list of epic glory events. Preceding Collision 3, Glory 79 will take place featuring four fights in four weight classes. That is followed by Glory Collision 3, and what a card we have for you. For our main event for the heavyweight title, Gokan Saki returns to the glory ring after a seven-year absence when he faces James McSweeney. And finally, the heavyweight world title is on the line when Rico Verhoeven looks to defend for his 10th straight time as he faces Jamal Big Ben Sadiq in the third fight of their trilogy tied at one fight apiece. Glory Collision 3 is exclusively available on pay-per-view at gloryfights.com. You can purchase and stream the pay-per-view live from anywhere in the world. Glory 79, which precedes Glory Collision 3, will be available for free at GloryFights.com, as well as Glory's Facebook and YouTube channel. Well, that'll do it for the Glory Collision special. My name is Todd Grisham. Don't forget, we're just a few hours away from Glory Collision 3. Order it now, live and exclusively on pay-per-view at GloryFights.com. But first things first, it's Glory 79, and that starts right now. Youngster, I made a mistake, got hit, dropped. The king still reigns supreme. It's 1 1. I want to fight Rico again. The boss, right now, you know, I'm the king, I'm the king of the jungle, and if he wants it, try and come and get it, baby. I'm the Goliath, man. I know I can do this. about an hour east of Amsterdam, the birthplace, the home, the mecca of kickboxing. We're in Arnhem at the Heldra Dome, and what a night it is going to be, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Todd Grisham, alongside the former Glory welterweight champion of the world, Joseph Baltellini. 
I got the feels. Yeah. I got the feels, Joe. Every time I come to this arena, it feels big, it feels right. There's so much action and excitement, man. I'm pumped for tonight. All right, so the Glory Collision 3 pay-per-view starts in about two hours. But before that, we'll have Glory 79. But first things first, let's talk about Collision 3, which you can see exclusively on GloryFights.com and, of course, the heavyweight title. Yeah, that's the trilogy fight we're all excited for. I mean, the first fight, Jamal Ben Sadiq ended up knocking out Rico. Rico comes back, finished them in the second fight. So this trilogy has a lot on the line. And also, it's the return of Gokan Saki, the Rebel. More on Collision 3 throughout this broadcast, but you're going to get four fights absolutely for free at Glory 79. Which one are you most excited about? Well, it's got to be seeing Hamisha right away because I think Hamisha's got that finishing ability that we're all excited for, but nothing really excites me more than Attic Boy and Plaza about two big boys wanting to knock each other out. So you'll see those four fights, and we'll roll it right into the pay-per-view, which starts at 2 p.m. Eastern time. You can purchase the stream for $19.99, $17.99, or $24.99, but depending on where you are in the world. So here is that fight card, Aleem Nabiev and Troy Jones, Alexi Ulanov, Surrey Adamchuk, Baker versus Serkan Koplovinsky versus Bruno Ghazani. Yeah, the fight I think I'm most intrigued for in this one has to be Nabiev and Troy Jones, both coming off, you know, a loss in their career, so they're motivated to get back, and either of these guys are definitely in line for title contention. Two Americans on the card, including Matt Baker and Troy Jones. Let's talk first about the man nicknamed The Butcher, who's won three of his last four in glory. Yeah, The Butcher, very tall, big frame, and I mean, just the way he fights, you're going to see a lot of action. I mean, I'm really high on Matt Baker. I think with a little bit more experience, he's going to hit that top of the division. You can see that everything he throws, he throws with bad intentions. He's got good hands hands, but he uses his height and reach very well, so you'll see him use his kicks and his knees, and I know going into this fight, he thinks his kicks are going to be a big advantage for him. Let's talk now about Troy Jones fighting out of Minnesota, USA. Tons of skills and only one loss to Myrtle Grunard. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a power puncher and he's a really good technician. The way he sets up his finishes, he's good with level changes, spectacular offense all the time, but nothing better than that nasty head kick that introduced Troy Jones to the world. Yeah, one of the KOs of the year for sure. Now, as we turn to the featherweight division, not many better than these two guys. It's a rematch between Alexei Ulyanov and Serhei Adamchuk. Yeah, right off the bat, when you see these two names, you know it's going to be a technical fight. And again, from their previous fight, just as we predicted, man, it was such a back and forth game. You saw Adamchuk really come out trying to use his kicks, but Ulyanov, good at blocking them, good countering, and just kept returning fire, which made this fight really interesting. So what's going to happen this time? I think a lot of guys know they have to be active. And Uliana told, told us going into this, he's going to be first and he's going to finish last. Yeah, Alexi Uliana feels very upset about that split yeah. decision win for Adam Chuck Bow's revenge tonight. But let's talk about Aleem Nabiev. We mentioned Troy Jones. Aleem Nabiev, the professor, one of the best in the division, a two-time title challenger. Yeah, very technical, very good, and unorthodox is the key when talking about Aleem Nabiev. He switches stances, he uses his feints well, and it's a really tricky style for anyone he fights. Let's hear from both discombatants as they prepare for the main event of Glory 79. После этого боя, если дай бог, я одержу победу над Трой Джонсом, я хочу снова подраться за титул чемпиона Глори. Я думаю, что в этот раз, в этот раз у меня есть большие шансы стать чемпионом. И я думаю, это мое время. Два раза я дошел до финала, и мне не получилось выиграть пояс. Но в этот раз у меня есть хорошая мотивация, и слава богу, у меня все хорошо. Я думаю, что в этот раз пояс. Yeah, once I beat him, I want to be back in the title conversation because with the full camp, before my last title shot, I had got it on two weeks' notice after I knocked out somebody in Miami. And I want a full camp. I want to be able to properly prepare for a title fight and not feel rushed into it. But I'm, as a competitor, I will never turn down anything just because you never know when your next opportunity is going to come. So I'm going to take it, and I'm going to take it in stride, whether it's on two weeks or eight weeks. I'm going to just be ready. That's why I'm try I pride myself on being ready at all times. So after I knock him out, we're going to get back in that title conversation. Cannot wait for that fight. And on such a special evening, we've got the who's who of the kickboxing world in attendance, including our very own Remy Bonyaski, who's standing by with Mark Shaw. 
Yeah, thanks Todd. It's great to be back here at the Gelder Dome. And here, I'm here, of course, with the former three times K1 world champion, Remy Bonjowski. Remy, we have a wonderful evening in front of us. Give us your thoughts about the night. Mark, I'm so happy. I'm so happy to be here. I'm excited, excited for Collision 3. We have seen it with Collision 2, a stack card, and now again here in Gelder Dome. Man, I'm really excited for this evening. Yeah, we're going to start, of course, with Glory 79. Four fights, what's your favorite pick? Well, my favorite pick will be Nabiev. Alim Nabiev versus Troy Jones. These guys are, you know, they have different uh, different styles of fighting. Nabiev, very accurate, moving a lot, playing with his uh, opponent. And Troy, Troy Jones, he has a fantastic high kick. I'm looking forward to that. Awesome. I can see you're excited. That makes two of us. Todd, back to you. It's time to get things started. Yeah, I'm excited too. We're all excited. How about we all shut up and we start watching some fights? Glory 79 starts right now. The top stand-up fighters in the world gather again on the sport's biggest stage from Brazil to Bulgaria, from the U.S. to the Ukraine. Here for Glory 79 Arnhem, featuring East versus West battles in the featherweight and welterweight divisions. All of our bouts tonight sanctioned by the Fight Sport Organization of Holland. Alex Engelhardt is with us ringside.
You got Stoyan here with Big Mike giving him the sponge splash to wake him up. Keys to glory here. For me, it's Stoyan. He's got to use that reach. I know he's crashing that distance, but that's where Kazani's trying to clinch up on him. Take those little angles and try to mix those kicks and knees up the middle. Are smart key for him. And I like Big Mike telling him, always go to the body. The Brazilian needs that nonstop pressure. Keep coming forward. It's got to add up as the round goes on. Keep those combinations going and try to mix his own knees up the middle. Try to end and counter back with his own low kicks. Just over an hour and 40 minutes until Glory's Collision 3, headlined by Rico versus Jamal. GloryFikes.com. Five Glory girls here tonight. You know it's it's big proceedings. Expecting well over 15,000 here tonight, approaching maybe 20,000 at the Heldra Dome in Arnhem. Did you hear I uh, added in the Yeah. We're big on the I feel like your Dutch is getting better. <laughs> You've been here enough where well, it's getting better. Well, Dunkeville. But how about the output from both these fighters? Yeah, it's a, it's a good fight, fire fight. Basically draw the line in the sand. High kick from Stoyan, blocked nicely by Bruno. Yeah, there's no rest for the Bruno's opponent. You better keep going. Yeah, you see what happened there. Stoyan wanted to take a little breather, tried to circle out. Ghazani followed him right away. And there's those knees I like from Ghazani. And our open scoring on display there. All five judges giving the Bulgarian the first round. Yeah, he was a little bit more active, landing the cleaner shots, the bigger shots. But this is where I'm starting to see that Ghazani pressure start adding up, right? Stoyan, not as much maybe pop happening. Good low kick there, almost swept Kapolovinsky off his feet. And again, Ghazani does not let him rest. Yeah, I like that Ghazani low kick. And it looks like he goes to the calf too. He's mixing up those levels. It's a shame, it's like... Uh, Two girls in high school wearing the same dress to the prom. <laughs> the exact same trunks. Well, what would they do? Maybe fight each other and see who can wear it or not. So that's what they're doing now. <laughs> Minute and a half to go here in round two. Ghazani, 67 professional wins, unbeaten here in glory. Much less experience for the sniper. He only has 12 pro wins. And nine of those, uh, nine of his fights in his career have been in glory. So experienced here, fought big names, Josh Johnson, Jariah, he's fought Bezzati. Push kick there from Stoyan. Good right hand for Ghazani. Yeah, Stoyan came back though, that left kick. That Stoyan left kick is dangerous, and what he'll do sometimes, he level changes with it. I think that's what he's got to do. Hit the body, then go back upstairs. Bruno complaining about Stoyan leading with the head, and he is warned by the referee. Break! Break, break, break. Heads up. Stoyan throwing that left head kick over and over. Ghazani seems to block it every time. Yeah, I mean, Stoyan now trying to hit moving backwards is a good strategy as well. Because you see, after Stoyan kicks, Ghazani steps right forward again. No time to breathe. Break, break. Little bit, a little bit of concern, perhaps, in the corner of Bruno. Oh, step forward, big jab there from Ghazani. Yeah, that's a nice uh, spearing jab, I call that. Stop. Let's take a look at the number five ranked lightweight in the world. A face full of water for him as he prepares for round three. His biggest moment by far when he won the lightweight contender tournament at Glory 49 in Rotterdam. He also holds a marine navigator's license. He can drive those big old boats. But you need to step back here because that's where you get hit. Yes? His opponent, Bruno Ghazani, looking a little fatigued here in between rounds. Former Road to Glory champion, knees. That was his best strike tonight, using that low kick really well. But one of his more impressive wins would have had to have been his last fight against Mohamed Hendu. That was a, a non-stop back and forth action fight. So he's used to these style of fights. So this third round's gonna uh, need to be a big one for him.
Gazzani usually excels in the third round when his opponent starts to falter. Let's see if that's the case here in the final three minutes. Again, a clean sweep for Stoyan. So a knockdown is needed here for Gazzani. Yep, Bruno has that pressure, but he needs to put a little bit more of the strikes together. Because although sometimes Stoyan moving backwards, he's still landing well. I like that left hand work of Stoyan. Good jab, digs to the body. Downstairs again for Stoyan. He's mixing that left uppercut as well. That's what I call the intelligent lead hand. Bruno's punches just don't have the same steam that Stoyan's do. Yeah, I mean, a good shot for Gazzani could be a nice overhand right when Rapoglinski digs to the body, just kind of counter upstairs. Just as you said that, it was Stoyan that landed an overhand right. Stoyan's still got some good pop in his yeah. strikes. Stoyan in superb condition. Yeah, oh yeah. You can probably tell from his 12-pack. <laughs> Gazzani can't afford to stay outside on this guy either. He's got to get back in. Total strikes fairly even between these two, Joe. Yeah, I mean, it's Stoyan landing the cleaner shot, so I think that's the story of this fight. Gazzani's not out. He's still throwing, still coming forward. Gazzani's still waiting to land that, that big shot, that game-changing punch or kick.